everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. Today we are in the 4640 and we are going to be taking the Kuhn FC 4060 TCR out to my place and we are going to be mowing hay. So we just got the mower hooked up to the 4640 and we are going to head out to my place. Uh, tonight I'm going to do a little test area. I'm going to knock some stuff down uh, right below the pole shed or right below the machine shed out of my place at least and go from there. I want to see how it how it cuts, uh, whether it's level. Uh, this mower should be set up for mowing already. It's already uh, had the first time set up and everything done on it, but I just want to kind of take things slow. So Travis and I just adjusted the torsion bars in the back. Um, we noticed that one was about an inch more off of the other so we straighten those out and um, it should be running level now but we're gonna lift it up take it out to my place and see how she does I sent Travis out to cut out the Klein pasture just to mow a bit out here uh, before I let my cows out so that we can get bales off of what's there. Tomorrow he's going to head down to the valley and cut more down there while I'm cutting out at my place. So now we're out of my place and we are looking at the small field below the house here and I'm gonna mow this off just above the ryegrass. Um, this was seeded down last year, and out of my place we have quite a bit, uh, at least two strips, one or two strips, where I reseeded ryegrass this year with that Kuhn seed drill. And as you can see, the ryegrass is coming up pretty decently here. However, um, what I reseeded into has started growing up, so, all the alfalfa and everything is much taller than the ryegrass so um, the alfalfa out in this field is budding out so it's time to cut it and what I'm trying to do here is knock everything down to the ryegrass's level to give the ryegrass a chance to grow back up um, rather than being suffocated out because we reseeded the whole bit even though you can just see the ryegrass over here but I want to knock down all these weeds and everything else that's coming in on these strips so Got some more here. When it comes to these mower conditioners, probably one of the greater things to me is to have a mower that is center pivot because they offer so much more versatility when you're out in the field. You know, you aren't constrained to mow on just one side of the tractor. Uh, you can get around stuff a lot easier if there's trees out in the field. If you're backing into the shed, you can control the, where the mower's headed. It's just, it's just a lot easier. So I'm standing out in the field now and I had the mower set for about an inch and a half to an inch and an eighth. And uh, I'm looking at this waterway here with more, more grass than alfalfa. And I'm just walking around having a look to see how it's all laid out. And it's got nice wide windrows. You can see about on the edge where I cut because there's just a little bit of gap there on material. But pretty much what it's done is laid all the material flat out on the ground. Um, and the reason I wanted to do that is so that it dries faster. 
but I'm walking through some of this going, man, did it miss this spot here? And I'm putting my hand down and pulling the grass up that looks like it's just standing there. And it is definitely cut off. It's just the mower was that gentle on it when it went through. Now, if you want more technical information on this mower, um, you can go to our previous video, delivery day, where they had delivered this mower. And it gives a lot more info on it. Um, and I could just repeat everything in that video in this one, but um, if you're interested for more of the details on what this mower is for, like it's for alfalfa, but you can use it for grass. Um, whereas with grass, you want flails because they strip the grass more than they'll crimp the alfalfa. With alfalfa, you're worried about losing those leaves, which is why you want more of a crimping action. Now the conditioner on the mower is intended to put a crimp in the plant every inch to two and a half inches, I believe Ben said. Um, it's supposed to be a lot more gentle for the alfalfa plants and looking at the alfalfa plant You can't just really see that it went through the conditioner as well as you can when it went through with the flails Because the flails have a tendency to destroy the plant more But if you pick up the plant and start running your fingers along the stem you can see Where like right there and there Where the roller conditioner Crimped the plant. There's another one right there Another one right there. Hopefully, since the rolls aren't as abusive to the plant, um, hopefully they'll still dry down just as well. Um, it's kind of why I wanted to widen out the window as wide as I could. But my intention is to come out with the merger and pick this up. Uh, in the lighter stuff, probably double it up, but in the heavier stuff, um, do single windrows to try to allow the hay to dry as much as it can. So for now, uh, once Travis is done over there, I imagine he's gonna call it for the night. Um, he's going down to the valley tomorrow. And um, I'm gonna keep going in the morning. So we've got about a five day stretch of good weather um, that they're calling for no more than 20% chance of rain on any given day. So this is the best outlook that we've seen in quite some time. So hopefully it doesn't get rained on and uh, we can get a good first crop made off the hay out at my place. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. We are back in the 46 and we're about to get started. It's a nice day out. It's actually pretty cool out, which is a little bit of a change up because it's been pretty warm here. All right, let's get started.
and I'm just standing out here checking out these windrows and uh, they're nice and wide. I'm hoping that by laying them out like we did that we can speed up the drying process a little bit. Um, and hopefully in a day or two we can come out here and merge these. Uh, probably what I'm gonna do is merge the outside two rows and then merge everything out one row. So that way um, I'm not doubling anything up like I would with the larger wheel rig. The alfalfa that we reseeded ryegrass into this year because we didn't really think it was gonna do much, the alfalfa actually came out pretty good in some spots. Um, you can see in some places where we came through with the coon seed drill and seeded ryegrass, there's a row right there. But hopefully um, in the spots where the alfalfa really didn't take off, the ryegrass will take over. Um, a lot of this was really weedy, especially on the backside. So we're hoping that by knocking out these weeds, um, it'll allow the new growth to come up. One downside to having the mower completely opened up, um, removing those shrouds, is that the 4640 can't drive over any of these windrows. Uh, they're so wide that when you're mowing, you're always gonna have at least one, if not two sets of wheels on the window and you can see it here so what that's going to do is it's going to push the hay down into the ground and it's not going to dry as well right there but we've traditionally always gotten that with the john deere mower so i'm not too concerned anyway but i'm going to take this back to the farm and put it away until we need to use it again the mower did great uh, i don't really have anything bad to say about it at all I really like having those two extra feet over our John Deere. Um, it's wider, so fewer passes. I'm really looking forward to getting this stuff made and seeing the kind of cutting job that it did. We tried to keep everything above an inch and a half and it looks like it did a pretty good job. I think where this mower is really gonna shine is maintenance time with those knives, how quick, quick they change out. Um, when we gotta change those out, I'll be sure to make a video on that and see how fast we can change them out. Plus, I like the fact that the front of the mower, can't do it because I only got one hand right now, but this whole bit folds up and that way you don't have to climb under the mower. Um, gives you a little bit easier access to the front, but did a good job. And um, I'm gonna be using this thing all throughout the summer. So I'll have a better opinion on it when we send it back. I think the 4640 is a good match for it though. That's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, all How Farms Work. And if you guys are interested in winning a How Farms Work hat, I'm going to give away one away on this video. Just leave a comment saying how long you've been following How Farms Work. And if you're interested in receiving all the notifications from our channel, be sure to go to our channel page Click the notification bell and select always on or do a quick search for how farms work on youtube and you can find the notification bell there so that's pretty much it thanks for watching guys see you next time